welcome to the October 8th meeting of the Winchester Select Board. Um, we're meeting a little bit of an unusual time on Thursday afternoon to um, deal with some specific matters. Um, we will take uh, the agenda a little bit um, out of order. Um, and we'll start with the um, Waterfield lot um, discussion uh, as we have um, some guests with us here today um, that have um, made proposals. Um, so again, my name is Mike Betancourt. Joining me um, today is uh, select board members, um, uh, Amy Shapiro, Mariano Golubov, uh, and Vice Chair uh, Susan Verdicchio. Uh, our town manager, Lisa Wong, is here. Uh, as well as uh, planner Brian Sakelli and um, uh, Council Mina Macarius and uh, Mark Tugut, Assistant Town Manager. I'm just kind of looking looking across the board as everything is is moving as I'm as I'm trying to read. So um, as I mentioned, we're going to start off with the uh, the Waterfield discussion. Um, I um, it's uh, our expectation. I think that um, we're going to vote and move forward with a a uh, singular um, applicant to, to recommend um, at this point, um, just to kind of back everything up for people that are um, just coming on. Um, if you could um, make sure your name is um, carefully um, adjusted, if it says Brian Zakelli, um, if you could change that, um, it would be just helpful for, for our purposes and um, for, our, for our record. Um, but, um, and if everyone could uh, could you know mute themselves unless they're they're speaking. So um, this process started uh, a year ago or so um, with a RFQ where um, we had a request for qualifications. We identified uh, a number of qualified uh, developers um, that uh, could apply, and we submitted uh, an RFP that was responded to um, by uh, several applicants. Um, and now there are of five, um, what I would say, um, finalists um, in uh, in place, and um, it's our job to uh, decide on which one we'll move forward with. Um, and Lisa, I'm not sure how we we wanted to to start the discussion. Um, you know, we've been talking about this for a while, so um, I think um, that it, just to kind of remind everyone for the record, our one of our primary um, goals with this project uh, was affordable housing. Uh, parking is a major component of it as well, but um, really we've been looking to uh, bring uh, more density uh, near transit uh, in Winchester to the town center. And so that's uh, one of our clear objectives. But um, Lisa, if you, um, I, I don't know if we want to get um, get into anything substantive or not. Yeah, sure. Um, so I did want to ask our town council um, a question on this. Um, so Mina, given that um, we're sort of going uh, for, I would say sort of a, in some ways a generic um, town meeting approval, uh, there's also some discussion about whether it would be wise for the board to uh, have consensus on a top development team, but if it makes sense to also choose a number two at this point in time or whether we can do that later. Um, that's a good question, Lisa. The, the town meeting approval is just for the authority to lease the land for the, the term involved here. Um, it doesn't, as a legal matter, um, require the entity who you're leasing to. So you could have done this even before the RFP, for that matter. Um, so the question of whether to identify one or two um, uh, people, entities is entirely uh, a policy and strategic one, not not one that you have to worry about to satisfy the legal standard for town meeting. Okay, um, then moving on from town meeting. So let's say that we do choose um, a developer today and have consensus. Um, and let's say that down the road, the developer chooses to back away or something happens. Uh, is Can we just, do we have to pre-identify who that number two is now that we would then go to? or can we do that later? This is a little bit unusual compared to other bid, um, uh, other bids. When you have a sort of straight financial bid, you usually would, couldn't just do that. Enough time has passed, the bids are no longer valid, et cetera. Um, so in some ways it depends on how far away from the time the bids were submitted and whether they're still valid, there's a period of time 
that I believe in the RFP they're usually valid for. Um, you could still go with the number two bidder. That's not unusual in this circumstance. Um, if there is a pre-ranking, uh, certainly that makes it easier to figure out who the number two entity okay. might be. But um, uh, I guess I wouldn't for I wouldn't foreclose the ability now to, to identify them later. Um, uh, but I, you know, the further away we are from when the bids were submitted, that that may be harder to justify. Just because of changed circumstances, changed economics, et cetera. So. Okay. Um, so based on that, um, back to your original question, Mike, I think it would be a wise idea to at least identify the top two, if not three, um, for each um, uh, select board at this time. Um, do we do we have somebody from Mass Housing on on this call right now? Um, I don't see. Yeah. Um, I guess what I'm trying to understand is what is going to be the next step for us. So let's say we identify either one or two, like, are we engaging with the developer to uh, make changes or what, what are the next steps? And I think that would determine how many developers we want to uh, identify. Um, so once we select a preferred developer today, um, we would notify all of the development teams um, that we have selected a developer and are entering into um, negotiations with them. Um, it's sort of a, a three-way process. So one is we would start negotiating with that developer on um, the LDA and on the project itself. Um, and we would also be going to town meeting. Uh, in terms of the specific um, work that we would do with the developer that we would choose, um, it would be a myriad of due diligence. So um, we would be uh, making sure that they understand the process they still need to go through um, for town approvals. Uh, uh, because there's different financing mixes, uh, we would then um, look at that in the context of the timeline for um, the ability of the development team to then go out and get um, get their financing in order. Um, so there would be a number of different things that would be happening simultaneously once we start working with the development team. So any thoughts from board members um, uh, about the, the process moving forward? I, I will say, although it wasn't um, clearly stated in the RFP, there was an ex expectation um, that was probably communicated that we would be moving forward um, with uh, a singular applicant um, going into town meeting. And my only concern is um, if, if we have two um, and you know those are um, put in front of town meeting, um, people might vote against the, the concept um, if they don't like a particular um, project. Um, and you know, I think the, our first goal is just to get town meeting authority to, to move forward with something. Um, we know that any one of these projects um, would be a home run. So um, I don't know if any other members have um, perspective on that at all that want to weigh in. Well, Mike, I would just kind of um, emphasize that th these are all proposals and there are a lot of intervening steps between now and getting them built. And that um, also that, like you said, we are, are very, very fortunate to have such strong proposals and strong teams to choose among. I wish we had more parcels of land. Um, so one thing that I'm a little bit hesitant about um, is we do have one select board member um, who is not here at this time, uh, Mike or Patty. I hadn't heard back from Jackie about whether she was going to be late or missing the meeting. She, so I assume she said time. she's going to be late. Um, she, um, she had a two o'clock, so um, um, I, I'm not sure when when she's going to show up and uh, so. Um, so I hate to move, have people wait, but I think maybe moving this towards the end of the meeting 
would make sense to have all five board members present. Um, okay, I mean, I guess I would, tr maybe we can try to find consensus around um, recommending, you know, one at this point, and then we can, when Jackie arrives, we can um, see if there's um, consensus around um, moving another applicant or two forward. I, I, I you know, um, we, we have a, sh we have a very short window of time for this meeting. Um, I think we only have until three o'clock and we still have a lot to do. So um, I think um, if Jackie's going to come on in a, in a few minutes, we can see if we can um, add her into the second portion of that that conversation. But I guess I'd like to, to, to move forward. Um, so substantively, um, is there um, discussion on a preference for um, a singular developer um, to move forward um, for members of the board? So, um, I mean, I think. Go ahead. Go, go ahead. ahead. No, go ahead. No, I was just going to clarify. Just want, are we basically talking about whether we want one or two to bring forward to town meeting? So right now, I think we're um, we would be talking about a um, one whoever our first choice would be if there's consensus around that, and then maybe when Jackie comes back, we can talk about an additional um, uh, an additional one. Um, so I, outside of just sitting here waiting, I, I don't know what else you know we can do at this point. Um, where I can um, so I mean I think from the standpoint of uh, the teams, I think we have, we got five incredible proposals and I echo what uh, Susan said. I wish we had five different uh, sites <laughs> that we could, uh, um, uh, as far as the finances, I know we have to do a lot of um, additional work to, to make sure that that works, but um, all of the proposals seem fine. From a design standpoint, to me, the, the number one was Civico. Um, I think that um, the number one thing is uh, the way that it separates uh, pedestrians from cars. Um, there is uh, no crosswalks inside where, uh, where pedestrians have to navigate crossing um, uh, vehicles um, and the cars are going in an alley. So that's uh, with everything else being equal from the standpoint of um, of development team uh, mo being mostly equal with the, the standpoint of, of uh, finances. Um, uh, I have to go with the, the building that we want to see across from the common for the next 99 years. And uh, the design for me is uh, Civico is number one. Thanks, Mariano. Um, other members of the board? Yeah, I um I echo Mariano's thoughts. Um, I think that um, we've gotten a lot of feedback too from other groups that have that were present, and um, you know I think really cr critical stakeholders in town um, who also agreed with that. So I I loved reading. It was really helpful too to read through some of their thoughts. Um, I really think that the the parking for me, uh, their willingness to to think through that and um, and explore what's possible, um, I think is another really critical part of this development. So, I will um, I will say Civico is my first choice as well. Yeah, I don't want to make things boring, uh, but I agree that Civico seemed to be to hit as many of the right notes as um, as possible, and um, I like what they do with the site, as as Mariano um, said, and just the, the the way they had worked sustainability objectives into like lots of different aspects of the the design uh, was was uh, also a plus for me. Um, and like I started to say, you know, there's a long way to go between here and, and having a finished project. And they seemed very willing to work with us and, and to listen to the community as well, um, as, as, you know, all of the, the teams did. Um, so I, I would put them as, as my first choice as well. Um, thanks, Susan. I, 
haven't seen that uh, Jackie has uh, jumped on yet. So if anybody does um, see her, come on, um, let me know. I, there's a lot of lot of windows here on my uh, computer to move through. Um, but uh, I, I would concur with the um, rest of the board on um, Civico, and I was uh, amazed how many community um, stakeholders agreed with that um, assessment as well, and uh, really weighed in. So we heard from uh, a lot of uh, different uh, groups, organizations, elected boards, appointed boards, um, individual residents. Um, so um, that that seemed to be um, the project that um, most stood out. I, I think um, it's not just the ideal project for us, but it's um, we've got to sell this um, as well to residents. And um, we've heard from people that have been nowhere near this project that they're concerned um, with parking. That's always the uh, issue uh, in Winchester is that, um, you know, everybody wants a parking space right in front of wherever they're going. And um, it's going to kind of take a long time to, to wean us off from that. Um, with that said, you know, I'm concerned um, with the ability to uh, go um, underground um, there in a financially feasible way to get the, the um, Parking for Winchester residents to to allow capacity for that. So, um, you know, that's that's the only issue. Um, and I think what Brian has mentioned as well that while we have an initial concept, um, this is in no way the final um, rendering of what's going to happen. That's a longer process over a period of months. Um, but I would I would recommend uh, uh, Civico, and then uh, I think we should really have the conversation about a. Um, a backup or uh, another another group. I would 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 be um, I would I would put Penrose um, forward in in that sense as a, another developer if we chose to um, to uh, to move forward with two. But um, uh, and I see that I've uh, been rambling long enough that Jackie has come on. Um, so um, hey, Jackie, uh, how are you? Can you hear me? Hey, Jackie. Connecting to audio. Um, there, Jackie, can you hear me? We'll just wait for, for Jackie to come on. Hey, Jackie, can you hear me okay? Yeah, sorry about that. I apologize for the delay. No, no worries. I, I know it's tough in the middle of the day when we throw these meetings on. So we've just been discussing the um, water field proposals um, and our process moving forward. Um, there seems to be consensus at this point, um, just backtracking from the board, that um, Civico is the, um, uh, the the project to move forward. Um, and so I agree with that. You agree with that, and if yeah. you'd like to make some comments to that effect, that you know, we all we all did. Okay, that's great. I don't want to belabor this, but um, and certainly not to um, disrespect the process, but just out of deference to the board, and that it is the middle of the day. But I think I have um, indicated some positive comments during the respective hearings. Um, it seems like the um, this project um, kind of hit in so many of the categories that the RFQ was seeking. Um, also, the proponents were extremely responsive to not only the questions, but also um, their solutions to many of the issues seemed um, to reflect a great deal of experience as well as agility of mindset. And um, I think those are um, combinations and a team that we're seeking. Um, not to show any disrespect or shade on any of the other applicants, extremely grateful for all of those um, and feel honored to have been part of this process. So thank you. Thanks, Jackie. Um, so in uh, to kind of close the loop um, on this specific one, seems that there's a uh, consensus um, around Civico uh, as the uh, first um, applicant to move forward. Jackie, um, there was a question that we began to discuss about whether we would move forward another applicant um, or more than one. Um, and it you know may be um, beneficial for us to uh, you know, at this point, um, add, an, add another developer in uh, to um, uh, 
to keep the discussion going. But we're, you know, I'm I'm open either way. Um, it, um, I don't know if you had thoughts around that. Yeah, uh, that's I, a that's a brilliant question. I would just say that um, you know, I think that sometimes as the projects move along, there's more information that's learned with respect to a lot of things, but including infrastructure impact. And while a lot of those things can be negotiated, it has caused some hitches in some other projects that um, I won't name, but in our town. And um, so, but as long as, you know, we're committed to a, a process that involves a lot of transparency on behalf of the developers so that, you know, we can continue to have a, a good understanding of what the impact is and whether or not we may or may not need to seek additional consultants to establish that or to negotiate anything else. Um, it, you know, I, I guess I'm sort of torn because I understand the concept of having another one advance, at least I, I, I guess I'd wanna know more what the next level would be. I don't see any downside in doing that. On the other hand, if this is, uh, I know this is somewhat time sensitive. Um, I guess I I want to hear from others on that, including our town manager. Thank you. Thanks, Jackie. Um, Lisa, any any thoughts? I know that you um, at the outset you had kind of um, mentioned, um, you know, your your feelings on it. If you could maybe revisit that a little bit. Sure, Jackie. This is a great question. Um, so I consulted our town council on this meeting earlier about whether it would make sense to choose a, a second choice now. Um, for example, if our, our first choice backed out or, or something uh, uh, prevented the project from moving forward. Um, and I think one of the constraints of waiting until later to pick a second choice is that enough time might have gone by that um, this process would be invalidated in terms of having to go out to bid again versus um, utilizing this, this um, project right now. And I don't know if you see the screen, but um, yeah, I'm sort of filling in, um, you know, the, the first and second choice as people are, are giving it to me. I, I, forgive me, I'm not sure if I understood your comments totally, but um, I think you were um, weighing in favor of not advancing a second um, project to the next level. Is that, did I understand that correct? Um, in terms of advancing it to the next level, I think it would just be that um, we would be identifying another developer that we would reach out to and uh, negotiate should anything um, happen that we would not proceed with the first choice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, when you say another developer, you mean within this pool or potentially starting from scratch? Uh, within this pool in order to not start from scratch. Right, exactly. I understand. Okay, so you're so if I understand you correctly, you're su you're suggesting that we go forward with one, but knowing that if if a hitch arises, that we try to figure that out as quickly as possible, so that we can try to engage uh, another uh, proposal that had been considered. Correct. And I, I had mentioned, um, you know, uh, Penrose as being uh, another one of the applicants that I would move forward in that um, kind of uh, second seat. Um, that's why, uh, if you're looking at the screen, Jackie, that's why Lisa has put it in there. So, um, I so that I, is, uh, I think that we all agreed on the, the first choice. Um, it's uh, to see if there's consensus around uh, a second choice, if even the developer would want to be um, in that role. I don't know. Well, um, we had talked about, you know, how to do this and whether we would, might want to have, uh, you know, one. Um, top choice and then a, a backup or, you know, in case of some crazy hitch arising. So um, I was, again, very torn. These are all good proposals. I was torn between Penrose and Waterfield Preservation Partners. Um, but I guess if, if I, at the end of the day, I would, I would put Waterfield Preservation Partners as my, my second choice. Again, they just sort of seem to have a Hit as many of the the goals as 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 possible. Any other members of the board want to weigh in on um, that second position? I, when it's my turn, I'm happy to. Uh, okay, uh, Mariano. Um, yeah. Um, so my. Uh, this one is a tough one because I think there's two that are very close. Um, I, I really appreciate uh, the 
uh, number of units that um, uh, don't write down yet, Lisa, <laughs> but the number <laughs> of units that are win uh, put for the 80 to 120 percent. Um, I think that sometimes uh, the um, you know, we, we look a lot into the SHI, which is for up to 80% and um, the 80 to 120%, which uh, includes a lot of town employees, um, doesn't get as much uh, attention. So um, from that standpoint, I thought the win uh, proposal was stronger on the affordable housing. Um, however, the Penrose proposal also has some of the 80 to 120 percent. I wish it had a few more units in general. Um, it is the the proposal with the the fewest number of units, but I think that as the number two, that might be able to to be bumped up maybe. Um, and the design is certainly um, the the number of intersections between where where there could be a collision between. Uh, vehicles and um, pedestrians is much better in the Penrose proposal because there's only one very wide um, uh, clearly marked at the front uh, sidewalk. Uh, so anybody walking to and from the uh, the train station won't have as many uh, collision points. So it's very close between these two, but I would put Penrose as my second choice and Wynn as my third choice, uh, but very close. Amy, what do you think? Um, so I don't know if my uh, my second choice will be consequential or not at this point, but I, I was really impressed with NOAA. Uh, I like that they're a nonprofit. I like their experience in affordable housing. Um, I like their design, that it was a little bit more subtle um, than some of the others. Um, so I'd probably say my second choice would be NOAA. Um, and I think my third would probably be Penrose. Uh, Jackie. Okay, and thank you so much again for everyone's patience. Um, I, I, this was a little tricky, obviously, I'm sure for all of us. Personally, as soon as I saw the Penrose um, um, elevation, I thought, wow, that's so um, interesting because it, it kind of mirrors some of the um, other architectural elements in town, um, not just some of those that would be indicated in Civico or in some of the other buildings. So it presented a variety, but also a variety that also exists in the town. Also, I um, was favorable to, I, I think Mari, um, Mr. Goloboff pointed out well, and I apologize, I missed Mr. Betancourt's comments, but um, but that the proportion is something that um, with respect to the affordable units, which was something that Mr. Goloboff um, thought was a, a priority for him. And I, I, I respect those comments. I also thought that the size overall, I don't mean the dimensional size, but the number of units seemed um, perhaps in keeping with this site overall, which is obviously not that large um, compared to, you know, basically in terms of the square footage. So long story short, I guess I was aiming to Penrose as second and Noah as third. And I would also point out that the comments of the planning board to me were very impactful um, as, as, they, as they often are. But here I thought that they did a very careful analysis and the fact that they do have um, a lot of experience with um, what's consistently um, envisioned for the town center, I think is, is very impactful. And I think they had a toss up between Penrose or NOAA in their final analysis. Um, they may have put Penrose third, I'm not quite sure. But for me, just personally, I thought the Penrose design just offered um, kind of some more um, variation in our town center that, that still embraced many of the qualities that exist. So I guess that's where I, so yeah, so Penrose and then Noah, correct. Thank you. Okay. Um, so um, I think it makes sense for us to um, formalize the process a little bit. Um, as long as everyone's comfortable with moving forward in this way, we would be um, uh, our first choice with Civico and, and, it, and it seems to be a consensus around Penrose for um, that second spot, um, and unless I'm hearing otherwise. I could take a motion to that effect. Um, so 
I, I guess I move that we um, designate Civico as our first choice to move forward uh, with on this uh, proposal and that our second choice would be um, Penrose. Second. Uh, all in favor, I'll take a roll call vote. Uh, Amy? Yes. Mariano? Yes. Susan? Yes. And Jackie? Yes, and I just a point of clarification if I could. Mm -hmm. I believe the vote related to the order and not necessarily the, um, unless someone tells me otherwise, the, the earlier question as to whether or not to advance more than one. Um, I think those would be two separate votes, but please let me know if I'm mis misunderstanding. Actually, uh, Mina, do you mind weighing in on uh, how we need to structure the vote, whether we need to have a separate sure. vote for one versus the other? Um, like one for Civico, one for Penrose, one to advance two first and then to choose two. So let, let me describe what I think is the intention. And then um, uh, Mr. Chair, what I would suggest is just making sure that everybody agrees this is the intent here. Um, my understanding was that you intend to advance and begin negotiations uh, towards a project with Civico, but that should there, you know, you encounter difficulty with, with that or something happens and that project is no longer moving forward, um, rather than um, you, though you want to have captured who the second um, and third choices are from the board. Um, to negotiate with at that point. So you're not you're not simultaneously negotiating with multiple parties. You're only negotiating with the number one choice, which was unanimously Civico and and deciding who the backup essentially is. Is that correct? That's what I was thinking. That's that's yes. my understanding. That's my intention too. Yep. Okay. I, I don't want to cut off Jackie or Amy if, if that's before. No, I I and I respect your points. Um um, Attorney Macarius, because it may be complicated actually negotiating, you know, that verb with more than one party, and there needs to be a clear line. So I respect the comments that um, that you made. I think that they're they're helpful to us. Okay. All right. The uh, alternative, Mina. Sorry to interrupt. The, the alternative would be if Civico something happens with Civico. The alternative, if we didn't do this, would that we would we have to reopen a new RFP or would we be able to go to Penrose in the future? What I, what I was suggesting is that you, um, that's, it's hard to for, forecast that at the moment, whether you would have to go to a new RFP or not. So selecting a backup is not a bad idea because it, it sort of gives you, as of today at least, who your second alternative is. So if that is the understanding of what you're doing, um, Mr. Chair, I'm, I'm going to just verbally draft a, a proposed motion. And again, if, if this if this captures the intent, then then you can move. Maybe perhaps somebody can move it in that form. Um, I would say that the board move, move that first. It selects Civico, select to proceed with Civico and negotiate um, with Civico for the project. And second, if necessary to, um, to, to negotiate with someone else because you're unable to reach agreement with Civico at, at some point in the future, that it is the agreement of the board that the second choice, can't, second choice proposal is the Penrose proposal. And rather than make anyone repeat that, if that's accurate, uh, so moved would probably be sufficient. So I don't know if that. I was about to say. So and I'm moved. sorry, a point of clarification, if I may. So I understood exactly every single word of what Attorney Macarius just appreciate that. But just to clarify so that I don't misunderstand, but we go forward with Civico and not commit to going forward with Penrose. It, all we'd be saying about Penrose is that they ended up in second. Is that is that fair to say? That's that's how I was understanding. Yeah, you're not you're not planning to negotiate with Penrose, but if you do need to, uh, that is your backup 
is Penrose. Thank you for that clarification. I second that motion. Uh, before you do, Jackie, just actually, I just sorry to be stickler on procedure on this, um, but um, Lisa uh, alerted me. Thank you that um, I believe you have another motion outstanding. So I think we already voted on it. So maybe we can reconsider um, that motion with this one. Yeah, we did vote. It, it's pretty close to the second one. So I, th I, I, I'm comfortable with a reconsideration knowing that it's just providing clarification on the terminology. I don't think we finalized the vote actually. So um, oh, we can, okay. um, I mean, um, Mina would know, and I, I, I'd actually I don't want to put more pressure on the board, but I'd, I'd rather if we, we moved the motion um, from a board member. Um, so um, just to clarify, and Mina, I don't know if there's anything that you can even put in the chat is that that motion um, to make sure that everybody's on the same page because we're complicating it a little bit. Sure. Um, I'll try to type that out and give me just a second. Mike, uh, while that happens, can uh, do we want to take something else up? That way we're not um, putting Mina under the, the spot as far as timeline. So he has five or 10 minutes to do it. It's already in the um, the, the, ch the chat, but Mina, I'm sorry. you. you I did just to you, I think. Yeah. Um, okay. I don't, I don't see it. So. I don't, there oh, there we go. Here, so that's great. Thanks, okay, Mina. So what, what do we do with the previous motion? Just should I withdraw it or? We actually didn't finish that motion, so okay. um, it, right. it it was moved and seconded, but um, um, okay. withdrawn. All right. So I move that the board number one select Civico as the winning bidder for the Waterfield Lot Project, and to ne initiate negotiations with Civico for said project, and two that it is the consensus of the board that the Penrose proposal is the second place proposal such that if it becomes necessary to engage in negotiations with an entity other than Civico, the board will proceed to negotiate with Penrose instead. Second. Uh, all in favor, I'll take a roll call vote. Amy? Yes. Susan? Yes. Mariano? Yes. Jackie? Yes. And yes for me, the motion carries unanimously um, five to zero. Um, and I think that we've got the um, motion there um, in the chat um, for, um, for Patty if uh, she's recording. Um, and I, I just wanna say thank you um, to everyone involved in this project. The town has been working on this for a very long time and the um, process was made better by the skill level that all the developers um, brought and, um, and really responded to the needs um, to, the, to the town. And um, uh, we really, really appreciate you in, investing in, uh, time and energy in, uh, in the town and, and we, Hope to try to bring you back for another project at some point. Um, so thank you. Um, and I'll, um, uh, at this point, uh, I'm going to take the uh, agenda a little bit out of the order because I know that we've got um, some residents uh, here. Um, so we'll move on to the net zero stretch code municipal resolution. Um, and I see uh, Ken Pruitt um, is here. Hey, Ken, how are you? Doing well. How are you? Great, great. Um, 
we're behind as usual. Um, so uh, <laughs> um, thank you for bringing us to us. I see uh, uh, Sue Doubler and uh, Tom Howley uh, as well in front of me. I apologize if I'm uh, missing anyone else, but uh, welcome. Um, what do you got for us, Ken? Thank you. Well, thanks so much for making time on really short notice uh, for us to bring uh, this matter to your attention today, um, Mr. Chairman and members of the board and Lisa, we really appreciate um, speaking with you today. And so um, I'll try to keep this really short because you have a letter that, that uh, lays, lays out the issue pretty well. But uh, as you know, uh, the Climate Action Plan Committee uh, of which Tom Alley and um, Sue Doubler and a number of other of us um, helped write uh, called for substantial reductions in greenhouse gas emissions over the next uh, the coming decades that will require um, a series of actions and tools to accomplish uh, the plan specifically one of the measures in the plan specifically called for advocacy by the town uh, with the state to create a net zero stretch energy code uh, so that at least as we build new buildings in the future um, they can um, be net zero as opposed to needing to retrofit buildings later uh, that are built um, with substantial fossil fuel infrastructure. The good news is that an opportunity is uh, before us right now to, to advocate for a net zero stretch energy code. And that is because the uh, Massachusetts legislature, the House and Senate have each passed their own um, pretty strong climate bills this year. They were different. And so there's a conference committee resolving the differences between those two bills. The Senate version of the climate bill contained um, a measure calling for a stretch energy code to be developed by the Department of Energy Resources within a year of passage of, of the act. And that, um, that measure would be tremendously helpful. It would, it would create an opportunity for Winchester and other communities after local discussion and after a town meeting vote, um, if it was successful, to adopt that stretch energy code um, that would go quite a bit further than the current stretch energy code that the town already adopted. And so, um, you know, there are a lot of competing interests at work on any bill in the legislature. And what we're asking is for this board to be on record uh, with our legislative delegation, all of whom are wonderful on this issue, but nevertheless, um, to, to have the backing of the select board specifically to go to their respective chambers at the state house and advocate with leadership and also with the six members of the legislative conference committee to include in the bill that is reported out, we hope it is reported out, the Senate's language on the stretch energy code. Um, and that could give us a very powerful tool in the toolbox to, to get to meet the, the goals of the climate action plan. Um, the letter that we sent has a lot more detail and it has a suggested uh, resolution that you could adopt or um, or edit to you know whatever you felt was was appropriate, but we really do appreciate um, this board's and Lisa's uh, leadership on climate issues. Uh, it's it's gratifying to live in a town that is committed uh, to taking action on this important issue. Um, and uh, that with that, I'll I'll stop. I don't know if um, my fellow former CAP committee members Sue and Tom want to add anything, um, but also happy to answer questions. Yeah, no, I think that was uh, that was great, Ken. Um, the only thing I would say is that, and it's in the materials you receive, which is that, you know, in Winchester, uh, like a lot of communities, uh, about 60% of our carbon pollution comes from our buildings. So over a period of years, it's going to be really important that we transition in a really thoughtful way our buildings to renewably sourced electricity. And that's a big deal. Um, and then it's going to require, just like the plan itself and many aspects of it, a full community discussion. And I think that the importance of the legislation that the legislatures are, legislators are working on is that this will provide, if passed, it could provide a statewide uh, net zero uh, uh, stretch code option. And that will frame the debate that we must have in Winchester. Um, and so um, your action today would indicate your support of something that I believe will be absolutely necessary. 
um, for, uh, to provide that options to cities and towns across the Commonwealth. But what it will not do is it will not impose it upon Winchester. That will be left to all of us to engage each other in a real authentic discussion about whether it's right for our community to do it. But without that kind of stretch code, it'll be very difficult for us to really frame that issue and present people with a clear choice um, so that they can decide. So that's the, that's the only thing I would say. I think it's very important that, uh, that the legislature act. Sue, so you're muted still. Um, I very much agree with uh, what uh, Ken and Tom have said. And I really appreciate your meeting with us today. Um, this is what I, th I think is going to happen with uh, the work on climate is that we are going to have to partner much more with the state on multiple issues. And this is um, one of the first opportunities we really have to do this. So I think this is a really important action. Great, thank you. Any um, questions uh, for members of the board? Comments? Yeah, just thank you uh, for bringing this to our attention. I think, uh, you know, climate change is, is the challenge of our generation. It's the number one issue that affects uh, not just Winchester, but uh, the whole world. And uh, we, we need to address it. And um, this, is, uh, this is a good step uh, towards that, towards giving the town the flexibility and the whole state uh, to start addressing it at a local level. Thank you. I also wanted to thank everyone for participating today, um, given that it's the middle of a work day and, and so many other um, pursuits that everyone has. So thank you for all your um, support and hard work on this important matter. Thanks. Thank you. Um... Yeah, Amy, did you have something you wanted to say on mute? No, no I'm, just, I'm, I'm in full support. Okay, great, thanks. So, um, <laughs> Ken, I, I think ideally we would uh, we would need a, a motion um, to support, um, the, for the select board to support the uh, resolution uh, in support of a net, stre uh, net zero stretch energy code. Is that correct? Yeah, we, we you know, drafted a, a, a sample for you that you could yep. adopt whole cloth or, or edit, but ultimately, you know, we came to you because we think it's important um, for the legislature to know and our legislative delegation to know that this is backed not just by, you know, those of us who worked on the climate action plan, but but by, uh, you know, by town leadership. Thanks, Ken. Um, I, I just would like to hear from town council, not in any way sending shade or negativity, um, but on something as important as this. So um, if we're voting today, I'd like to hear from town council on this. Um, and if we're not voting today, then then maybe we can um, hear from town council the next time that we would be in a position to vote on it. Thank you. Uh, Jackie, I'm not sure what, what the exact question is uh, on it. Um, there, uh, you know, whether this can be, it, it sounds like the, the question is just a request to support um, a pending state legislation, which you certainly are entitled to, to do by, by your vote. So I, I've read it. I don't know if all, everybody has read it and is comfortable with what it says. It's not uh, an extensive document and it's, it's very clear seems to me um, that the intention is to express our support as a board in a town for this pending, leg pending legislation, two bills, um, which would create a uh, net zero stretch energy code statewide. And, and you know, I, I could move to adopt what we've looked at or if, if you know, if we, everyone would feel more comfortable to come, come back at the next meeting and actually adopt this. That I think that you know either way. I think we have a, a pretty good template. Sorry, Susan. You know yep. here. Um, you know, I, I mean, I'd, I'd be comfortable with a with a motion to move forward with um, um, 
what has been submitted um, okay. by Ken, if that's, you know. Yeah, I, yeah, I read it. It's a short resolution just yep. to support the uh, the two bills, so. Can, can I just add, <clears throat> the reason why I asked for town council's um, input is just because I understand to the extent that it's, you know, the whereas is and that it's um, support for the bills and who knows, they, you know, maybe strengthened or less strengthened, who knows. So I understand the um, the point here and I understand the importance of the topic. Um, the only reason why I wanted um, to suggest the town council weigh in is just, and it doesn't necessarily have to be today, but even if at some point if the bills are passed and become law, you know, just even little things like would our, um, would the state then kind of um, the state law sort of be superimposed over or whatever is might be a respective town um, like building code or something like that. And I, I don't want to delabor, belabor it in this meeting. I'm, I'm completely fine with voting in the affirmative. I just wanted town council, um, you know, to express what he did and then know that at some point we may need to revisit this, particularly if the law passes. And again, not in anything negative, but just really honestly, just to, to make sure that our town policies and procedures, et cetera, would be consistent. <clears throat> Thank you very much. So I move that we adopt this resolution in support of creation of a net zero stretch energy code by the conference committee for Senate S2500 slash H4933, the two bills in the General Court of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Second. Um, all in favor, I'll take a roll call vote. Um, Mariano. Yes. Susan. Yes. Amy. Yes. Jackie. Yes. And yes for me, the motion carries unanimously five to zero. Uh, thank you, uh, Sue, Ken, Tom, and everyone that's worked on this, um, you know, keep us posted. It, I think it it is important um, for legislators to hear um, at the local level from, from leaders that this is something that's necessary and important and that we're thinking about these things. So um, thank you. Appreciate yeah, thank it. Thank you that's very much. Thank you. thank you so much. We appreciate it. So we really appreciate it. Um, so I, I know that um, some of our members have a hard stop at three o'clock. Um, so uh, are there items, Lisa, that we need to be moving forward with uh, more than others? So, I mean, we've got a um, we've got the warrant, and we've got uh, the clerical MOU, and we have the CAAC members. Okay. Um, so we'll we'll go to the um, the clerical MOU, if that's, um, you need to move that forward. Um, are there any um, additional questions or comments from board members, um, or are we comfortable with moving forward with the MOU uh, as presented? I just wanted to jump in and thank um, our wonderful town manager, her team, and specifically uh, Ms. Vibert, uh, particularly given all the things that she has going on for all the hard work but also all um, the team on behalf of the, the clerical union um, for all their hard work and their, um, their patience, their constructive um, open-mindedness, listening to all sides, um, willingness to have, um, you know, something um, to have an outcome. So I think it's, it's always worth um, congratulating and sending praise when um, something is able to advance to this stage. Thank you. Great, thanks, Jackie. Um, unless there are other questions, um, I'll, I'll take a motion to approve the clerical MOU um, as presented. So I move that we approve the memorandum of understanding between the clerical workers union, SEIU local 888, Winchester, um, as presented. Second. Uh, all in favor, I'll take a roll call vote. Mariano? Yes. Jackie? Yes. Susan? Yes. Amy? Yes. And yes for me, the motion carries unanimously five to zero. Um, the, we'll move on to the climate action uh, term appointments. We had um, moved forward with uh, the, the ranking and selection of certain members and they've identified which uh, terms that uh, they would prefer. Um, and I think, um, Lisa, did you have those in front of you or? Uh, yeah, um, I first just I just want to very quickly thank Stacy Ward for her help on the clerical contract as well as well as everything else she yes. did as well. Um, yes. 
so for uh, the climate action members, um, we had told you that we would reach out to all the members on Monday. Um, and I'm just letting you know that not everybody got back to us. So uh, we know uh, those who did get back to us preferred a two year term, though some were flexible in terms of the one year term. Uh, so given that um, the staff recommendation is uh, to move forward um, with four year terms for the four individuals who actually got back to us first um, and who also indicated um, that they wanted to do uh, two year terms. Uh, so that's, that's um, I had it up. Um, I have it too, if you want. Yeah, Susan, if you want to move that, unless there yeah. are other questions or comments, and it's uh, what was, um, uh, you know, it's based on the responses we received. Right. So um, I move that we appoint Prasetta Calavi, Wei Chen, Rick Eno, and Ruth Trimarki to uh, two year terms to the Climate Action Advisory Committee. Second. And, oh. um, can we have that specifically ending uh, October of 2022? Just so I have a month in there. Such terms to expire on in October of 2022. Second. Um, all in favor, I'll take a roll call vote. Uh, Amy? Yes. Mariano? Yes. Jackie? Yes. Susan? Yes. And yes for me, motion carries unanimously five to zero. And then I move that we appoint um, Alan Field Adriana Garber and Jason Roeder to the Climate Action Advisory Committee for a term of one year, or each put for a term of one year, um, expiring October of 2021. Second. All in favor, I'll take a roll call vote. Amy? Yes. Mariano? Yes. Jackie? Y yes. Susan? Yes. And yes for me, motion carries unanimously five to zero. Warren articles, we've got two minutes. Um, are there, <laughs> um, and I, I think um, to um, Mark had um, kind of drafted a, um, a a list of the um, substantive select board articles for us to review. Certainly, there are um, yeah, many others, but the the ones that are really before us um, are uh, Article 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 21. Um, Lisa, I don't know if you have that or I can. Um... I only have a hard copy. Um, Mark, is that, do you have the ability to share it? Um, I think Patty, in, in Patty the chat. has it. Um, Patty, yeah. do, you, do you have it you can throw up on the thing? Okay. Mike, so, is, it's going to take a couple minutes. But, that's yeah. fine. I put it in the chat. So um, if there are questions um, about, uh, any of those in particular, any issues, or um, we can hear them now. Uh, so just to add to this, uh, there is the, Brian, there, um, I can't remember which article it is, but the, the one that the planning board was looking whether this like board was going to co-sponsor. Is that? Correct. Um, it's the article on home occupations. I, I don't know what the numbers, the number is uh, on the current um, article. Yeah. Um, um, article list, but is the, it's the one for home occupations. It might be six or seven, but I, I don't know. So we would need to know that, um, at this meeting as well. Um, is that, is that the one that allows people to work from home from an accessory building? Yes. Yeah. Right. Yes. Sure. And since everyone's working remotely, people need to do this. So yeah, that, that, had, had come, that it had come through us um, initially and um, just wanted to make clear um, for town meeting that it's you know, something that we support yeah. as well and um, you know wanted to move it forward because um, uh, it's, it's kind of a no brainer. Yeah, Mike, uh, home occupation is article four currently. Four, okay. Yeah. And, um, I'm sorry. Um, I, I can throw the slides up on if there's any questions um, if, or I don't know.
know what you guys, if you have any questions about it. It's not a new article. We're just sort of editing the, amending the existing one. I mean, it's not a new yeah. zoning uh, paragraph. It's, it's we're just Correct. editing. Yeah, it's the, it's the regulations that govern home oh. occupation. We too, it's, um, it's uh, zoning bylaw section 3.2.1. And we're taking out one of the restrictions. One of the restrictions is that no home occupation shall be conducted in any accessory building. So we are taking sorry, that Can you confirm out. the article number so we know what to four. be? Article, article four is the, um, is the home, home occupation article. Yeah. Um, so it's a little tough to see here, but yep, keep it right there, Mark. Um, you can see what's, what's happening is that this number four, where it says no home occupation shall be conducted in any accessory building, that is getting struck through. Uh, that's one change. And the only other change is that uh, in number two, there's an, um, the addition of the word accessory building. So you're looking at the total square footage. Instead of just looking at the total square footage of the dwelling unit, you're looking at the total square footage of the dwelling unit plus the accessory building. So it's just saying that it can only be a certain size. Um, it still can only be 25% of the total floor area. It used to just be the dwelling unit, but now we're since we're allowed to have, or since the point is to allow them in an accessory dwelling, in an accessory building, that now you have to put the square footages together to get the total. So if I, and is this a planning board article? Correct. This is a zoning yeah. bylaw. Okay. So, what was what was the vote of the planning board? Um, I mean, this is a planning board article. I know, but th did they take a vote to put it on the warrant? Um, that is going to happen on Tuesday, but there's nothing preventing that that vote. Uh, so technically, oh, okay. they, they haven't done the vote yet. Okay. It technically is not; they have not done the vote yet because we wanted to know whether you were co-sponsoring it as is. Oh, I um, see. Okay, I we apologize. Were waiting, we were waiting yeah. for the co-sponsor. So, so, but so for number four it would be removed. So, in other words, where it currently reads no home occupation shall be conducted in any accessory building, that would no longer be the case, and instead. It be replaced with there shall be no sales of products on the premises in connection with such home occupation correct well i would i wouldn't say replaced i would just say that the num yeah that number four is getting deleted and a new number four yep yep okay, okay so, so no, with, you're right with, you're right but but doesn't that mean that then um, somebody could rent out an accessory building like somebody could actually live in an accessory building as opposed so to very yeah, it's a very good question. Um, so no, uh, that is, but that is that is not allowed. So if you actually, um, if you read all these regulations in here, one through eight. So first of all, the person has to be a member of the family that you can't work there unless you're a member of the family living there. So it's not even just member of the family you have to be actually living there. You can't create any noise. You can't get any traffic. I mean, it's highly, highly regulated. Um, and it, this is essentially for putting, you know, uh, what people are doing is they're putting you know, offices, meaning, meaning uh, multi-printers and, uh, you know, a, a, a laptop. I and mean, I mean, this is, just, um, so these are highly regulated, meaning you, you can't generate any more traffic. It has to be people that are living in the home. This, these are what all these regulations state in one through eight here. Right, I understand the situation. I guess if we're voting today, well, I, I request that we defer voting today. If the is not in favor of that, particular article, um, then then I, I my vote won't be yes, but I'll decide if it's a no or an abstain as of, as of today. Thank you. Well, okay, I, just to be clear, I don't I don't I don't know if you're voting to put it on the warrant right now. We the only reason or one of the main reasons I'm here is to see if this is going to be co-sponsored by the select board. I understand. And that's what I assume would be the motion is whether or not we would be co-sponsoring this article. Correct. Right. Okay. So that's what I was referring to. I really appreciate all your um, help, Ryan. Very helpful. It, it's just to clarify a little bit. It's it's my understanding that there's the full support of the planning board um, with this article, and um, you know we we um, you know I think that we it would make sense for us to join in. It, it came through the chamber to us um, over the summer when um, there was um, you know an, an issue. Um, that um, we realized that this was prevented and all of a sudden it's really what everybody's doing. And, you know, uh, so we, um, uh, in, we were asked to issue an order to allow this um, and we tried to do it. And um, then uh, council um, 
ruined our party and said, uh, we, we don't really have the authority to do that. So um, we teed this up for the fall, but we're not, we're currently not enforcing this um, provision. People are working in this capacity in their units and we're just um, doing some cleanup work here. And it seems nice for us to join in with the planning board on this article. Um, it's um, it, it's as light lifting as, you know, we- Yeah, we I, I would different. just I would just add and not to overcomplicate things because I know we need to keep moving, but um, the, all the uh, some of the terminology that's used in this um, proposed warrant article um, has different meanings. And um, certainly the, the goal I'm not against as has been articulated by the chair and by Mr. Sakelli, but the impact of some of the terminology and other bylaws, I would just want to look at further. So um, I don't want to take any more time with my comments on this. Just, I'm just trying to explain my position. Thank you. So Jackie, would you be comfortable with us um, making a motion to approve and join with this article subject to um, the unanimous, unanimous support of the planning board as presented. Mina, you don't like that? Well, I, I'm just a little bit con confused. Why, why are you subject? I'm just confused on why the condition is subject to the unanimous approval of the board. The, the planning board doesn't have to have a unanimous vote to put something or, or approval from the planning board. I just, I, I think, you know, maybe Jackie, are you concerned that we haven't, that the planning board is not in favor of this or? The, the goal that has been articulated, and again, I don't want to take up too much time, and I really appreciate everyone's patience, but um, it, it sounds great as far as the goal, but accessory housing and accessory buildings and um, what can and cannot be done in accessory buildings, um, other than just uh, the homes are doing their own work, um, it's, it's, it's a very complex area of the law, as a term of areas may be aware. Um, in, many in many towns, there's a wide variety of definitions of, of uses of accessory buildings. So um, I just like to have you know, more information and, um, other than today. So I totally respect if the board needs to call a vote and or we don't necessarily have to be unanimous in any event, but um, uh, it's, it's a very complicated area of law. If the goal was simply as has been articulated, that would be easy. Obviously I have no problem with anybody doing work in their accessory building. Um, it's just that we need to be mindful that this is, um, there's a, a lot of land use activity around um, farms. And I would just wanna make sure that the terms we've chosen to use here only um, achieve the goal that's intended and something else, thank you. This has been approved by council, I believe, yes. Yes, it's been discussed by me. In fact, I, I raised some of the same questions Ms. Welch did with the planning board. The planning board explained their, their view to me at a meeting. Art and I have both reviewed it. We've reviewed every single one of the zoning articles actually multiple times with Brian. Um, so Jackie, I, your point's well taken, but I, I am comfortable to say that all this does is allow home occupations and accessory buildings. Um, nothing else, nothing changes about home accessory. Right, but if but if it's dependent on regulations, which are not subject to town meeting vote, correct? No, it's not dependent on anything other than this language. It, it This was a matter that was coming up because by not allowing home occupations and accessory buildings, the building inspector who also does zoning enforcement was basically you know put in a position of if someone works above their garage um are they now in an ex doing a home occupation and accessory building that seemed untenable especially given our all of our experiences the last six or seven months um and so the change was proposed um i had a concern about the definitions elsewhere in the bylaw to make sure that, for instance, you couldn't open up a business above your garage. Um, in working through with Brian, it, be, it was clear that that had been taken care of and addressed and the planning staff, Brian, um, had really thought about that. Um, and we, in our review, we thought it was it was well drafted. So um, I, I'm, I'm comfortable with it. I certainly, you know, respect your, your choice, whether you need more or less time to talk about it. I know there's other articles here, so I don't want to Belabor this either, but yeah, and, and no I, I appreciate that I can think of. Yeah, and I rest assured, I understand crystal clearly what the goal is here, which I do not disagree with whatsoever. I'm only commenting as a practitioner in land use law that this is a very complex area, and by striking entirely, no home occupation shall be conducted in any accessory building. Um, there's 
you know, I'm not questioning anybody's legal analysis or the drafting terminology, but also to the extent that um, Mr. Sakelli noted, I thought I heard him say that there may be some regulations along these lines, if I understood that. Is that correct? Uh, right. The regulations are in front of you. Yeah, well, those he's regulations- the, These are, are the regulations. Those are the bylaw, 3.2.1. Uh, then I misspoke. These are, this is what I'm, I, I, what, what, I can't scroll up because it's, um, <laughs> because no it's hard, but, but basically uh, it references the, the, the regulations of 3.2.1 number right. four. So, so maybe, I, maybe I used the wrong term in terms of regulation. I think so. But the idea yeah. is that uh, this is highly regulated through the zoning bylaw already. So sorry for right. that. Yeah, no, that definitely sent me off because regulations as everyone- I, on our board either knows or needs to know, are not subject to the same zoning process through town meeting. So they can change um, any day, So, um, which is fine. That's important for regulations to have that um, quality. But I just, that definitely threw me off. Sorry, I totally understand it. And so no, there are no uh, additional regulations associated with this outside of the zoning bylaw. Yeah, okay. Why, why would we <clears throat> co-sponsor this? In versus just voting for it. Just voting for it. I, I, I think it just shows our uh, support to town meeting that we're, you know, working towards something that um, originally came through us relative to COVID, um, people working at home. And um, we, you know, want everyone to, um, you know, be clear that this is um, uh, uh, something that's supported by uh, town government um, uniformly. But I, you know, if, okay, well, if, I'll just, if there's I'll, opposition to it, if I, I, I can't imagine why there would be, frankly, it. but you know, I'm not opposed um, to it. Yep. I just don't understand why we would do why we're overcomplicating something that doesn't seem that complicated to me, where we could just vote on it and show our support that way. But yeah, I, th I think this makes a great point. And I would just note that, for example, by striking out no home occupation, should, first of all, I'm, I'm going to say for the 15th time, I totally agree with the goal. That's not the point. As members of the board, we need to be really careful and make sure that, you know, we understand town analysis about terminology that's chosen. It's not about the goal. We can keep talking about the goal 52 times, but I already agree with the goal. It's just the terminology that's chosen. By striking out, no home occupation shall be conducted rebuilding. Um, you know, I'm concerned that there could be multiple home occupation, not by the owner of the property. Uh, and, and so in any event, it's just, it's a complicated area. Um, I actually agree with what Ms. Shapiro was saying, but I don't want to disrespect the, the good comments of our chair either about showing support for that. If it was simply the goal that has been indicated, then I wish it was possible to write it, and I'm not faulting anything, but in a way that it might not in the future have some ramification about something else. It's a very complex area of the law. And I guess the bottom line is, I guess I'd agree with Ms. Shapiro. Thank you. So <laughs> we are voting on the warrant as well. So there are two separate um, issues here. If we vote to move this, the, you know, the warrant fo forward as written, it does, um, you know, indicate, although we're not supporting that article, um, you know, individually that, um, you know, as, as presented, this what is it, it, this what it is. So, um, if there are issues with that article substantively, um, I guess if we don't want to vote to support this um, on the warrant, um, then um, we can make a recommendation to change language to the planning board um, at some point. I, I, I don't know. Um, it, I, I didn't think that this was going to be heavy yeah, or lifting. Go ahead, or go ahead and 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 um, call the vote, and I'll just abstain. What what you know? I respect the process. This has probably already taken up a lot of time in the middle of the day, and I, I truly appreciate everyone's patience. But it's a very complicated area of the law. I totally respect the planning board. Um, it is their article. I totally respect what the chair is saying. I totally understand what our town council is saying. I just think that by striking that language, it might be opening something up that's not intended for the goal that's been articulated, but may open up a whole nother um, kind of area that was not really the reason for the change in the first place. So I think it's important to, to just tread a little bit carefully, but if the planning board, it's their article, if they wanna go forward, great. If the chair wants to call a vote, then let's just call a vote on the full slate other than this article and 
hopefully if you could call a separate vote on this article and I'll just note my abstention and we can keep moving. I, I really appreciate everyone's patience. Thank you. Okay, I'll, 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 I'll move that um, the select board um, supports article four and joins the planning board on the warrant um, in um, um, in uh, uh, as a as a sponsor of the warrant article. So moved. Uh, I don't, okay, it doesn't matter. I don't. If Jackie has issues with the language, maybe we should just not oh. support it way formally like that. I. It doesn't matter to me. Go ahead. I can't. I mean. I'll second it. It's okay. Thanks. Um, uh, all, all in favor, uh, take a roll call vote. Susan? Yes. Amy? Yes. Jackie? And just for clarification, so I heard correctly, this is just a motion regarding Article 4. Correct. Yes, it is. Okay. Uh, abstention. Thank you. Thank, and yes, for me, the motion carries uh, 3, uh, 0, and 1. Um, so moving back to the other substantive articles before the select board, um, as uh, listed, I, th I think it's on the screen somewhere. I have like too many screens open at once. But, the um, We're up to the noise bylaw maybe? Yeah, the noise bylaw, we can start there. Um, are there um, any issues or um, opposition to it? What's, what's a little bit different from this, from the construction bylaw is that we're still allowing um, activity. It's just really um, defining this mechanical landscaping. So if people wanna be out there uh, at four in the morning uh, raking and you know uh, weeding or doing whatever, that's fine. They just can't be you know using mechanical means um, to um, wake people up. So it's, it's something that we've talked about over the years, but is really been moved forward now that um, everybody's working from home and realizing that um, there's a lot going on uh, early in the morning. And um, so um, are there any questions or any uh, comments? I would just say that as we know, this has been years in the making and a lot of hard work by so many people. And as with any bylaw, if it proves that it's not you know, perfect, then um, you know changes could be presented to town meeting. So. Um, at least it's another try, you know, attempt to advance the um, topic, which seems very important to people in town. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Jackie. We had brought a, um, a noise bylaw independently a few years back that was like really way too heavy lifting. It required the Board of Health to uh, analyze uh, sound. And, you know, this is just um, specific to the landscaping piece for, um, you know, blowers and mowers. So. I'm very excited about this one. Yeah, me too. It makes sense to me. <laughs> um, okay. Um, so we can I think move on from there. Is there any other? So are, you, are we at the next one? Yep. Uh, which is the, um, what is the next one? The land acquisition. Listen, land acquisition. I was didn't want yeah. to say disposition. Yeah. Nope. So this is um, this is land at uh, Washington and Swanton Streets. Correct. That's correct. And we have an appraisal of this. Uh, an appra an appraisal is in the works. We expect it sometime, I believe, over the next, uh, prior to town meeting, Susan. Okay. So. Uh, questions on uh, Article 12. One of the things that we did uh, discuss this morning um, is trying to um, reach out to town meeting for um, some uh, separate Zoom sessions to go over uh, the Waterfield law in uh, Article 12 as well, because um, with these kind of complicated matters, we've had our hands in these things for a while, but um, it's a lot for uh, town meeting members just to 
get in the mail and to absorb it. So um, I think we're going to try to have um, uh, council present and uh, reach out and engage town meeting um, with individual meetings. It's worked well for us in the past with larger items, right? Lock farm, um, you know, the high school uh, override, things like that. So we, I think that there's enough heavy lifting here um, with, again, going back to a difficult uh, remote uh, format for town meeting that makes sense for us to uh, to do that more formally. So it's a little bit more work on our end, but I think it um, makes sense. Um, Mike, if I could make one correction. Yep. Um, in terms of, uh, I apologize, the, the appraisal that I'm waiting for is the Waterfield lot appraisal will be in in the next two to three weeks. I actually have the appraisal for the Washington uh, Swanton Street parcel. Sorry, I got one, one ahead of myself here, so. Well, there are two articles right next to each other, so yep. that, that's was why I was very haltingly proceeding, so okay. Yeah, and, and these articles are um, our um, articles, um, you know, for us to, to move forward, mm -hmm. so it's just a question of whether uh, we want the warrant to reflect um, what we're doing here. If there's something that comes up and we uh, don't want to move forward with it, we can also uh, IP it um, before town meeting. I guess I wouldn't want to get too much uh, substantively into uh, some of these if we don't need to. Right. So the purpose of the warrant is to just serve as notice to notice. people that we are going to yep. be discussing and, and possibly voting. Uh, the, the town meeting will be discussing and voting on something. So um, did we, do we need to complete the, the yellow or the, the blank here in Article 12? Mark? Yes, we need to. Um, there's a few spots and I think we highlighted, you know, in the warrant that Mina and I have to go back, you know, prior to when this actually goes out to the printer next Wednesday, I believe is the, or Thursday, I think is the day it's going to the printer. So there, there are a few holes, I'll call them, that we're going to be completing um, over the next few days. So basically the appraised value is going to go into this article? Correct. On, on the um, the Washington Street article, it'll be the amount from the appraisal. Okay. So do, you, do we need to do that right now? No. Um, I don't know, is, is Mina still on or did he? Go ahead. Sorry. Okay. Here. Mina, I think we were hoping to actually get a vote on the warrant today. Uh, I don't think the board's meeting again, are they um, before next Thursday when this goes no. to the printer? So the, right. the question is, there's still a few little um, numbers or um, polls, shall we say, that you and I have to complete? Um, yeah, the, the a couple of, I mean, there's some things that might just be final proofreading and I don't think, and you could certainly vote subject to us clarifying those. The ones that I wouldn't feel as comfortable not having you vote on are some of the costs, the, the, the appropriation amounts and so on that need to be plugged in here. So Mark, are all those filled in? What yeah, I think, um, let me just look at the list quickly. Other than the one Susan just mentioned, which um, is the Washington Street one that does not have the amount in there, but that would be the appraisal amount um okay. the, the mbta cost sharing i don't think we were going to put a dollar amount in the article i think we were just putting a sum and then put the dollar amount in the motion yeah and and let me just say on that one that one is through no fault of marks or leases or anybody else's the mbta has not given us a draft of the cost sharing agreement that they want us to agree to so that is a that's some delay on the t as well yep um, so I don't believe, Nina, and correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think any of the other articles require dollar amounts that I'm aware of. I don't believe so either. And I don't think even, um, all the zoning ones have been checked and, you know, will come out of planning anyway. 
the planning board anyway, but they've been reviewed. All of the bylaw ones we have certainly either written or reviewed, uh, bylaw change ones we've written or reviewed, and all the financial ones, Stacy, you and I have all reviewed. Yes. Yep. We've gone gone through all of those. Yep. So I'm I'm content. I I would say this is ready for a vote unless the board feels otherwise. Okay. Thank you. Where's Mike? Is he there? Can't see everyone. Here. <laughs> All right. I'm ready to vote. I'm, I'm comfortable. Okay. So um, I move that we approve the warrant for Fall Town meeting uh, November 2020 as presented. Second. Uh, all in favor, I'll take a roll call vote. Uh, Susan? Yes. Amy? Yes. Jackie? So this as a point of clarification, should the order say other than Article 4 where we have a separate vote? Uh, Mr. Chair, can I just oh. interject with a question because maybe to help clarify that? Jackie, are you objecting to it being on the warrant? Because if not, then that, that's that's what no, this means. No. So it's being on the warrant. That's what we're doing. Yeah. Okay, thank you for the clarification, Attorney Macaria. So this vote is simply for the slate to be on the warrant. Correct. I mean, uh, do you want it? Yes. Yes, correct. I think so. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, my, my vote is yes. Okay, and yes, for me, uh, the motion carries uh, unanimously four to zero. Um, and uh, I forgot to mention too, just for the record, uh, Selectman Golaboff had uh, to leave for a meeting, so uh, isn't here. Um, so um, we'll move forward uh, with, uh, or are we all are we all done here? Is this it? Um, right, is there anything else, Lisa or uh, Mark, that we needed to take care of? I know we had uh, we we invited a couple of people, including um, Nick, the new recreation director. In case there are any questions about um, uh, the uh, warrant article related to some expenditures that we needed, this from the revolving accounts for part-time employees. No, no. It's actually under standard articles, revised um, recreation enterprise fund. Oh. Uh, Okay. FY21, we just due to um, the circumstances, you know, with COVID and everything, you know, some of the revenues are down. Um, also, expenses are down. There may be the need to uh, revise the FY21 uh, Recreation Enterprise Fund budget that was voted at the Springtown meeting. And this this is an article that is typically on the fall town meeting more and along with the one for the Water Sewer Enterprise Fund. Where we make you know kind of adjustments to the current year's budget. So we're working with Nick, Stacy, and I met you know the other day with him. Uh, he's putting together you know different scenarios. There's still a lot of unknowns, obviously, in terms of his revenues and expenses. But he's doing different scenarios so we can kind of help him through it the best we can. Um, we obviously have to make a lot of assumptions at this point. So. So any any um, any questions for for Nick or um, any of the members of the board? Well, I'm thinking since Nick um, is here and taking the time to talk to us, if he, there's something um, you know, he would be the best person to hear the you know the order of magnitude or what or what he's you know looking to what, what the discussions are about. So um, <clears throat> I'd like to hear from him if, if he's around. If he's still oh. on the call. I'm I'm still here. Oh, good. He's there. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Um, Nick, go ahead. I just just um following up. It, it, Mark kind of summarized it pretty well. Um, you know, we we were anticipating it being a rough um, fiscal year for us um, when we when we carved out the budget and met with finance committee last spring, um, and we kind of went with the middle ground scenario, which. Um, had us uh, with revenues, you know, close to about um, $1.2 million, a little bit more. And mm -hmm. uh, right now with, with you know, we, we didn't have busing to 
mystic. So um, with with COVID, um, kind of putting that all in a, a kind of a disaster. Our, our our childcare revenue is down quite a bit. Um, so we're just coming up with alternative scenarios and trying to figure out um, additional sources of revenue. But we we don't want to overdo it either. Um, we're trying to we're trying to tread lightly, continue to keep kids separated and cohorts. So um, we're looking at you know the revenue to be down. Um, we're hoping not too too badly, but um, you know we we have two different scenarios where we're looking at one. Um, if things kind of were status quo, um, as we are looking at right now, it, it's looking at revenue would be down in the $850,000 range. Um, but in our second scenario, we're trying to um, um, carve out additional source of revenue and get more kids involved in childcare and, and kind of changing the way we, we do things. We, we're looking at maybe we could get it to uh, one point. Um, $1 million. So those are kind of the ranges we're looking at. So there, there's a kind of a bleak range and there's one that's a little bit closer to a, what we are looking at and, and what was, we called the middle, middle ground scenario. So that's, that's, it, it's still not where we kind of hoped it would be um, without knowing what winter and spring are going to be. And then looking in the summer where we get a lot of our revenues in spring as we enter the summer programs. If we get back to a little bit more sense of normalcy, we might be able to bridge the gap. So it's it's all kind of a real crazy guessing game here. Yeah, um, Mike, if I could mention one other thing that um, Nick brought forward, and Stacy and I have been working with him on it, along with Nina, is Article Twenty One. It's under the Select Board's uh, articles, and mm -hmm. maybe Nick could explain that briefly. What he's recommending is that we amend the bylaw so that we can charge part-time temporary salaries to the revolving fund. Um, Nick, do you wanna just touch on that? I think that's a great idea that you've come yeah, up with. Yeah, so, so in my short time here, um, we've, we, we've noticed that we need to kind of protect the investment we made in our fields in town. Um, you know, I've listened to a lot of the people that utilize the fields. There's been, you know, lots of reports and in, in I've firsthand seen, um, you know, road groups out on the fields, which adds the wear and tear. They're not going through the permitting process, not paying fees, which costs us money. We, re we rely on the revolving account fees to kind of reinvest in, in, in take care of our fields. Um, so what, we are, what we're proposing is to change the bylaws that are put together for both the grass and synthetic fields to allow us to hire a part-time staff um, specifically, um, their role will be in policy and procedure um, enforcement. So we're, we're calling, we're, we're going to be looking to add a position that's funded from the fees in those two accounts. That's called probably the field marshal. They'll have um, some part-time hours to kind of police the fields, help with safety, um, report any instances of, of rogue users, and just make sure that the permitted policy and procedures are, are being followed so that we can invest in those fields so that we can increase our revenues, making sure that people are permitted and, and, and uh, vetted through the recreation department so that they have the proper liability insurance, um, that they are Corey background checked if they are doing programs on the field. So that's what we're looking to, to do with that article. That's good. Thank you. Thanks. Interesting. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Nick. Uh, that's great. Um, any any comments or questions or Amy? I didn't know if you wanted to weigh in as well. I know you've been working with Nick. Yeah. No. I just. Um, I mean, he's he's been doing all of the work. I'm super impressed, Nick. Thank you for everything. I know that you've got a million balls in the air right now, and with the uncertainty of um, of the pandemic and and what the future holds, I know it's it's really stressful. So I just want to commend you for the work you're doing, and you know, just know that you know we're here. You know, I think this is a great solution. Um, the two warrants, I think that that's a great, great thought process. And um, hopefully, I think that that will, that part time salary will help to bring us even more revenue um, if we're able to identify those people that are using the fields without uh, the proper permits and without paying the fees. So, kudos and um, let us know if we can help out in any other way. Thank you, Amy. Any other questions for? Um... Nick, um, 
I, I do have to get moving myself, mm -hmm. but um, I, I did want to say thank you, Nick. You know, we we um, we don't always um, see you, but we see the work that you do and how great of a job you've been doing, and we appreciate it. And um, so um, I know that you've got a lot going on, and this was probably the the worst time for you to come into a new position um, with, um, especially one that's kind of fund funded through an in, in, in enterprise. Um, so um, we appreciate that all, all you're doing, and we. Uh, on our end, uh, hear nothing but good things, and we see that. So thank you. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Of course. Uh, anything else uh, from members of the board? So I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor, I'll take a roll call vote. Susan? Yes. Amy? Yes. Jackie? Yes. And yes, for me, motion carries unanimously four to zero. Uh, thank you very much, everyone. Uh, thank you, Lisa, Brian, uh, Mark, uh, Mina, and uh, also to uh, to Wincam as well. We'll uh, we'll see you soon.